back on again another bit of truth sunday what's up everybody now we go get into a few things i'm gonna break down this food and show you some things basically the origin of these food that we getting right now and i'm gonna show you break it down and you know let you understand that yes we are eating fake food but yeah i want the masses to understand i already told the people man i don't own a bitch food account that bitch food was created by macy kind of that sodomite and now they basically bootlegging my podcast and post it on there. You know what I mean? Now, I could already delete that shit. I could already log in there and delete it. But you know what I mean? I'm not that type of person. I'm going to just leave that shit alone because, like I say, Macy create that channel. Even though it got 40,000 people on it, it's, the, it's not mine. I don't want it. It got my videos on it. But what you have to understand, they're stealing my videos. They're stealing my videos. I'm doing the work right here just to wake up the people. When other people steal my videos and carry it all over the place, you never know what their intentions are. You understand? They're trying to make money. They're trying to manipulate the truth and everything. You got to be smart in these times. I don't post nothing on that bitch out. And if you listen to the videos, you can tell that it's a bootleg video. They basically sit there and record the video on their phone or some kind of instrument and then post it back on bitch out. If you listen good, you can tell it's a bootleg video. Now, let's get into this right here and I'm going to show you some things what I've been telling you for years about these food that we're taking in and what it actually doing to your body. Let's get into it. Just make it run. Mm -hmm. We sit at a table delightfully spread mm -hmm. and teeming with good things to eat and daintily finger the cream tinted bread mm -hmm. just kneading to make it complete a film of the butter so yellow and sweet mm -hmm. well suited to make every minute a dream of delight and yet while we eat we cannot help asking what's in it hold on we cannot help asking what in it no people that's bullcrap most of the people don't even think about that it doesn't even cross their mind, people. They're that sleep in this earth. It don't even cross their mind like what the hell is butter? How did they come up with bread? These are things that I discuss almost every day. How did they come up with these things to feed the masses? And what's the purpose? Listen. The wine which you drink never heard of a grape. You understand that? They're just mocking you right there. The wine that you drink, which they're talking about, grape wine. Never heard of a grape. That's what I've been trying to tell you the whole time. These people figure it out or to come up with these fake flavoring. It's not real food. Just the texture and the flavor. All fake shit. And they give the masses for food. Like I say, this grape wine don't have no grape in it. Listen. not be certain except for their shape mm -hmm. that the eggs by a chicken were laid you hear that mm -hmm. and the salad which bears such an innocent look and whispers of fields that are green mm -hmm. is covered with germs mm -hmm. each armed with a hook to grapple with liver and spleen mm -hmm. the banquet how fine don't begin it Till you think of the past and the future and sigh. How I wonder, how I wonder, what's in it? Mm -hmm. Harvey Wiley. In 1901, government chemist Harvey Washington Wiley. Listen, people, pay attention to how they implement all of these supposed government operations which are called gatekeepers and the masses. So between the food, the Food and Drug Administration, you're going to see these characters. They're the one who basically put it together. They act like they're cool and they, they for the people, but you don't understand. It's to put you into a system when it comes to this food. Pay attention. Set out to prove that Americans were being poisoned mm -hmm. 
by an ever-increasing number of new chemical preservatives mm -hmm. secretly being added to their food. So listen, people, this is the, the point that you got to get from this podcast right here as they tell you that they were secretly adding these chemicals to the food. Now it's not secret anymore. They tell you on the label supposedly what's in it, but you don't get it. We go talk about it with the label, the biggest deception they have on the food is the label that telling you what it is. Listen. Wiley had been on a public crusade for two decades mm -hmm. to force the government to regulate the powerful mm -hmm. new food manufacturing industry. Mm -hmm. When he struck upon a novel approach mm -hmm. to raise awareness, mm -hmm. human trials. Human trials. Mm -hmm. What Wiley wanted to find out is if you eat enough of this, will it kill you? They already know people, the Wiley character is actually a satanic puppet put on, put on by the government people. That's what you need to understand. All of them that supposedly be going to stand up for you and make changes is actually the government people. And picture that, people, from back in the days, 1901, this guy right here stand up for you with this food and the pies that they put in, in your food. He's standing up for you. And then look what happened today. What What's happening today when it comes to that Supposedly be pies that they're putting in the food. What's different? What this guy change? He let them put it on the label. What's in it? So you feel comfortable to eat it. Watch this. It created public awareness for mm -hmm. people to begin to question what was in See? their food. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think more importantly, mm -hmm. question these large corporations. Mm -hmm. America was definitely the Wild West for mm -hmm. putting all kinds of chemicals into food. See? It was completely unregulated. Mm -hmm. Any they worry about regulation of the poison. Does that make sense, people? You're going to regulate the poison? Wow, they know that it's poison, but they want to regulate it. You hear the words they're using? Listen. The producer could get away with whatever they wanted. Mm -hmm. Before Wigley... There was nobody testing to see whether something was harmful or Listen not. Listen to them. <laughs> wow. Wiley became the face of the pure food movement mm -hmm. pure that food. was sweeping the country. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're going to buy into and eating the pies and steel. You're going to buy into it that they have a pure food act supposedly and it's going to protect you from the pies and food. What do you think people? It's just a way to make you comfortable eating it. It's not different. And I told you in these times, more chemical food you're getting. You understand from 1901, they've been doing it. It's already advanced, way, way advanced now. That's why people die more quicker now. You understand? That's why you're diagnosed with cancer earlier. All of these sickness approaching the human being earlier in their lifetime. What do you think? Listen. Mobilizing legions of activists, mm -hmm. activists allied in a fight for all government shit like I can show you today when they're marching and doing all of these things is just government propaganda to bring something to the masses attention and of course anything they want to pass right there they can do it once they get you up on it to Watch human this. rights that mm -hmm. came to define they the progressive it. era mm -hmm. in this man's mm -hmm. course in life mm -hmm. was to make food safe you hear that people that man that they're talking about the government puppet his aim was to make food safe you believe it you don't get it people i told you after a while when you're running certain operation on the people people are gonna discover it they understand it you have people working you have people that that tie to it that come from the regular people so yes they know what's going on so yes after a while it gonna leak when it leak they put out one of their puppets to supposedly be standing up for you. That's it. What you think it is. And then all of a sudden, you get nothing but chemical food. What change? More chemical in the food. That's it. Making sure that the Listen. poorest among us could go to the store and get food uh -huh. that wasn't going to kill them. You see? Just in your head. Wiley's uh -huh. controversial experiments captivated and even entertained the country. You hear that? Uh -huh. And his volunteers earned the nickname... The Poison Squad. Yes, so they call them the Poison Squad because they're the one who is going to basically test the food to see if it's poison before it comes to you. Are they the one who going to expose it that it's poison? 
about Poison Squad. All bullshit for the dumb people. Their sacrifice mm -hmm. helped lead to the passage of the first consumer protection laws mm -hmm. in American history. Uh -huh. See the that? Poison Squad mm -hmm. was Food one bill. of the most influential scientific studies of the 20th century. You hear that, people? This is the first federal attempt. First, you have to understand, people, is science give you the food. That's why I tell you, you're eating science from day one. The science you're eating for food, that's it. All fake what they put together in labs. Of course, a scientist cannot come and expose it. To regulate the quality and mm -hmm. adulteration of food. Mm -hmm. In a there very real is. way. With the bow tie on, people, there you go right there. It's just a puppet they have on the masses. He's the one who's going to start having the masses feeling comfortable eating poison because it got a label on it's it. the father mm -hmm. of the FDA. Go back. In a very real way. He's the father of the FDA. You hear that, people? He's the father of the FDA. One of the wickedest things you ever known about in your life is the FDA, the CDC, all those shit that they have to gatekeep the masses. They're the one who actually killing you. You understand? They act like they're the savior with your guard down when you see them. When they mention something, you take it and run. The FDA tell you that this is good for you. Yeah, go ahead and take it. And later on, then the same one going to recall it and tell you you got cancer causing chemical in it. So what that tell you, people? Why would the FDA approve so many things that's bad for you and you still believe in them? That's dumb. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this right here, people. Take a look at what you see on screen. All potions and chemicals. This is how they create your food. It might sound wicked and harsh, but that's what they do to us on earth. They're creating our food in labs right there, people. Mm -hmm. Fake flavoring, fake coloring, fake food. Take a look. A lot of people don't understand that food created in labs. The idea of food... You can tell, experiment on the masses. In 1881, 37-year-old mm -hmm. chemist Harvey Wiley. Mm -hmm. And of course, three sevens, that show you one thing, it's a hoax. And I told you, this Wiley character wasn't here to save you. He just make you feel comfortable eating that pies. Working in relative obscurity. Watch this. In the lone laboratory on the campus of Purdue University. Mm -hmm. Always from one of those universities. Wiley had become fixated on the analysis of food products, mm -hmm. perfecting techniques for identifying and isolating their various chemical components. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, people, it's probably one of them that was in there creating those food. No lie, this is how wicked they are. These same people is a part of it, making you that poison for food, and then they're the same one who's gonna get the credit for expose it. Dumb on. <laughs> Earlier that year, the Indiana State Board of Health had asked mm -hmm. Wiley to examine the purity of commercially sold honey and maple syrup. You hear that, people? Let's go back. Who asked him to do it? Go back, people. The Board of Health asked this supposedly Wiley guy to check out the honey and the syrup, supposedly. Maple syrup to see if it's real. Huh. So they need that one guy they have to address... Bring it to this one guy to check if it's real. The Board of Health wow. had asked Wiley wow. to examine the purity of commercially wow. sold honey and maple syrup. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wiley collected samples from across the state. Mm -hmm. And I always tell the masses, and I, <laughs> I don't have to see these videos. I already told you. What I tell you from day one, what you're drinking for honey is not honey. They don't have that much bees to make no honey, people. Are you stupid? One company that producing all of these honey, they would have to have a whole city full with honey and fucking honey cones and bees making honey. They would have to have a whole city of bees to give you that much honey, people. Are you stupid? There's no way one company can produce so many honey. You don't even see one bees around the fucking building that they have selling it from. Where did they get it from? It's not real. Wake your ass up with a bam. Much to his surprise, mm -hmm. his analysis revealed up to 90% of them 
were fake. Ninety percent, people. Ninety percent, because once it's brown, listen to me. Once it's slightly brown, got the same color as honey brown right there. It's gummy. It's runny. It's loose, and it's also sweet. Same damn shit, right? Same thing they give you for syrup, maple syrup. Maple is just a flavor. Yeah, they show you, oh, we can, let me show you how we, we get maple syrup. We just stab the maple tree, put a damn bucket there, and it leak out in there, and there you go. Bam, you get syrup, maple syrup. You believe that? Oh, people said, man, you're a crazy man. The maple tree, they see it on YouTube where they chop the tree and just let it leak out the syrup. How many, how many supposed be trees, maple trees, it going to take for them to produce that much syrup? You tell me. What, you have a whole, a whole city or a whole country full of maple tree? And you have people chopping them and bleeding them for the syrup? It's garbage. 100%. That sticky substance and it's sweet. You're going to buy it for syrup and honey. Because they tell you that's what it is. You got the same texture. You got the same taste. What you think? The maple syrup just have the maple flavor supposedly. That's it. It's the same cornstarch. I should say corn syrup. The high fructose corn syrup is what they use. Mm -hmm. Most of the jars labeled honey mm -hmm. were just tinted corn syrup yeah, with that's... a scrap of honeycomb thrown in to mm -hmm. complete the deception. Bam! And I told you people, somebody was trying to, you know, argue with me about this shit right here when I tell them because they see the honeycomb in it. They say, oh yeah, this is a real honey mag because... You still got the honey corn in it. I'm like, the, these people imitate honey. You think they can imitate the corn? <laughs> it's just wax, people. It's just wax like candle. That's it. That's all they're going to give you in that jar. They give you that corn syrup, which is GMOs. You understand? Fake food. <laughs> Fake corn to give you syrup. When they get the syrup from it, of course, they can make, give you candle, the same substance as candle. Put some holes in it and put it in the damn bottle and tell you, yes, that's honey corn. And once you see that, bam, you believe that it's real honey. It's fake shit for the dumb masses. Don't buy it. You got to understand that. Unless you have bees making honey, those shit is not real. Wake your ass up. At the turn of the century... People would buy honey, and mm -hmm. it was usually corn syrup. Yes. People would buy maple syrup, and mm -hmm. it was usually corn syrup. I'm going to ask you a question, people. If back in the days, this is a serious question here. If back then they used to pass off corn syrup, as they pass off high fructose corn syrup, which is GMOs, and they pass it off on the people as onion syrup, back then, what do you think they're doing today? That means there ain't no real honey. There ain't no real maple syrup. Remember, the further they go in life, is the more the food get faker. You have to understand that. They claim to have more people to feed, more mouth to feed. They have to have more, more chemical, more fake food for the people. The real thing can't cut it no more, people. They don't want the real thing. The real thing can't feed everybody. Why are they going to invest in... Feeding people from the real thing they can't. And plus they're going to break your body down with these foods. All chemicals in it. Like I said, you have micro, you know, organs. You have some, some, some organism that's in the food. And you're going to seek it out. Go ahead and find it in the corn, the bacteria. It's a living organism in the corn. And you seek it out. Find that. And take it out and use it to produce corn. The bad part of the corn is what they take and use it to make corn. So you can get syrup from it. Everything they call sugar, sugary drink, that's what they use it for. That's it. That's the high fructose corn syrup, not sugar. Your Coca-Cola, all of these, you know, drink. Even iced tea, all of them. How oh, you think they sweeten them? All of those sweet drink actually sweeten with high fructose corn syrup. That's what it is and it's not good for you. 
That's what caused diabetes and all of them things on the masses. It's pulled by jam and it was usually you see? corn syrup. Jam. There you, you had go. no idea mm -hmm. what was in your jar of jam. Mm -hmm. You had no you way go, to people. know that because there was no labeling on yes, these foods. Yes, all you I... get the corn syrup to be like jam, like I don't tell you, just the texture. You understand? That's the secret. That's all secrets there, people. The texture and the flavor is all fakery. The texture is to make it more appealing and the flavor is to make you believe that you're actually eating the thing. You see what I'm saying? You're eating a strawberry jam. Yes, you're going to have that strawberry flavor more stronger than a damn strawberry. So all they have to do is turn that corn syrup into jelly-like. And of course, there you go. That's jam. Bam. Wiley takes all of these samples mm -hmm. and finds hugely widespread fraud across mm -hmm. the board in all of these products. And basically comes out and says, mm -hmm. if this is true in Indiana mm -hmm. alone, we know it's true everywhere. Mm -hmm. So this is a national problem. And this is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Watch him take the credit for that shit. Wow. Wiley's interest in the new field of food chemistry was happening at a moment of unprecedented change in the way Americans ate. Mm -hmm. By the late 19th century, the country was in the midst of a second industrial revolution. Listen. Great advances in technology mm -hmm. allowed for the expansion of all types of industry. Yes, that's why I try to tell you all of these supposed technology didn't come from us. They can show your people and say, look, this is a person who do this. Come up with this technology. That's the person who do that. But they are lying. This is coming from the fallen angels. The one that actually running us on earth. Call themselves God. They're the one who give us all of these things to destroy us. You have to understand that. They're telling you right here, industry and technology boom. That was the beginning of the destruction for mankind. From steel right manufacturing here. and there coal mining, coal to mining. communication and railroads. Railroads. Mm -hmm. Trains now moved people and produce mm -hmm. at a pace and distance never imagined. Mm -hmm. Radically reshaping the American landscape. Mm -hmm. All by design. No facet of life went untouched by the great economic transformation. You hear that, people? Including mm -hmm. the American diet. Mm -hmm. Cities swelled as millions of new laborers began working in factories. Mm -hmm. And if you understand, people, if you check the world, it's the same thing. Some of them barely getting to this right here. Some of them just passed it. Like, you know, implement certain things and get certain things to go work in their country. America do it long time, but this is how they do it, people. They show you how the world, you know, built upon. What it built upon and how it was built. All fakery. You understand? All deception, they build the world off. So when they decide to start booming with this technology and all of these things and put railroads and all them things, they have an agenda when they tell you, yeah, this is the reason why we have to do it. And then now, everybody start getting into the new world. Pay attention. The Look. nation's efforts to feed them mm -hmm. sparked a boom in the new field of industrial food manufacturing. You hear that? It just pop up. It just pop up. Post-Civil War. Mm -hmm. you start seeing what did I tell you, people? This is what I was trying to explain a while ago, how they implement things. They talk about the war. <laughs> these are how they do it, people. Every time you see they have these big events, they implement something brand new on the people that can completely change their life. And they almost don't see it happen. You don't get it out. Go back a little bit. Industrial food manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Post-Civil War, Civil War, you start seeing a migration to the city you and see? away from mm -hmm. people who are living in mm -hmm. the farm-fresh communities. Yes. There go your so reason. there's more and more people, more and more food has to be manufactured. Mm -hmm. There you go. The biggest purely economic development is the rise of big business. Mm -hmm. You get mm -hmm. Pillsbury. You get listen, people. And I already told you, man. You see, if you listen to the mag, you never go wrong. All of these irons, all of these big companies belongs to the same people who run the world you get it or what there's not a regular person come up with these companies these nestles these big companies what do you think people is the same government people that run your life when they bring this when they change everything over they bring you this right here and act like it's a regular man do it 
It's the same government people bringing these products to control you. Everything you consume got to come from them. Not known just random people. You understand that? Heinz, Campbell's, mm -hmm. Nabisco, all these mm -hmm. big food See? companies mm -hmm. emerge at this time. They just emerge. They just emerge, people. That's it. They just emerge from regular people. You believe it? That's the government right there setting up the plants to feed you the fake food from. With industrialization came consolidation. Mm -hmm. Midwestern cities grew into major food manufacturing Look. hubs mm -hmm. where everything from wheat, mm -hmm. corn, and livestock could yeah, be... Yeah, people, wheat, and that, that's another GMO food, people. The wheat is not real. Wow, you don't get it, man. Like I mentioned a hundred times, we don't come from here. They have to feed you here, people. You don't understand. They have to come up with food to feed you. You're at the mercy of these people who run the earth. So yes, they're the one who come up with grains, rice, and all of them things to feed you. That don't mean it's a real food that grow. You have to understand that that wheat shit, <laughs> those grains, they're not real. They created to feed you 100% and kill you. By 1890, Chicago's Union stockyards were processing over 9 million head of cattle yeah, a year. Yeah, that 9 million right on the money. You believe that 9 million cattle? That's why I try to tell you people, all of these food they give you is fake food. They don't raise no cattle to feed you no beef. That's what you need to understand. That's long, long, long gone. And by the turn of the century, mm -hmm. meatpacking behemoths mm -hmm. like Swift and Armor oh, Swift and company, were providing mm -hmm. nearly 90% of the country's processed meat. You hear that, people? They, they are alone responsible for 90% of the meat that the public eat. And you tell me just some regular people. They give them some name and everything. You don't get it. It's the same government people feeding you that shit again. Rather than moving food from mm -hmm. the area surrounding a city to the city, you know, you can grow your beef out in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. you, you can, can process it in beef. Chicago, mm -hmm. and you can bring it down into New York and City, process it. all through railroads mm -hmm. at fairly low cost. Mm -hmm. The slaughterhouses of America created the notion of an assembly line. When Henry Ford came up with the assembly line for the Model T, mm -hmm. it was inspired by the slaughterhouses in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It was all by design. Or inspired that was all by design and like I say whatever they're doing to manipulate you later on they hand it down to the public and go more advanced on your ass that's all they were applying all mm -hmm. kinds of new Look notions of efficiency mm -hmm. to food production mm -hmm. with mass distribution across the country food manufacturers were running into the problem of how to keep their products fresh for market mm -hmm. you see that right there that's why I was kind of throwing up on the supposed to be 9 million cattle that they're supposed to be produced. You can't have raw meat just out. How did you do that? How can you produce 9 million cattle? You have to kill them, drain the blood, all of this shit, cut them up. Wow, can you believe that, people? What kind of slaughterhouse can, can do that? 9 million cattle? Come on, people, like I don't tell you. This is all government operation right here. And don't be thinking that you're getting real natural cow to eat. And how to do so at the lowest possible cost. Mm -hmm. You didn't even have refrigeration. See? It hadn't been See? There really you go. determined there you go. how to preserve things in mm -hmm. a way that would keep them marketable for mm -hmm. a long period of time. There was canning, mm -hmm. but that didn't work for everything. Mm -hmm. So what were you supposed to do? Increasingly, companies were turning to the burgeoning chemical industry for answers. Listen, what was the chemical industry there to do? You said they turned to them. What was their purpose to begin with? Huh? You don't get it, man. They're there to create the food that you eat. Wow. By 1901, companies like Dow and mm -hmm. Monsanto. Monsanto. You see that? The ones that are giving you seeds to plant. And you're thinking that you're growing something organic. The Monsanto is the one that give you the poison for the supposed to be pests. Keep pests off your damn, you know, vegetables and fruit. You poison it. So Monsanto is responsible for most of the masses' demise. You have cancer, you're hanging out 
around those supposed to be plants and you work there or whatever where they're spraying that shit, you can have cancer. You're using it, it can cause cancer. That's why they basically put it in place for the masses. You understand? All dangerous chemical they're giving you to these shits. Pay attention. Introduced a host of new mm -hmm. chemicals to the food supply. There you go. Mm -hmm. There's preservative discoveries preservative from aldehyde, discoveries. the ability. Where did it come from? Like I don't tell you, these, these things don't come from us. Where did you come from making preservatives? Something that gonna preserve the food and keep it. It don't go spoil, but your pie is in the food. Listen. Synthesized from aldehyde. Mm -hmm. There's copper sulfate. Mm -hmm. which go back. There's preservative discoveries mm -hmm. from aldehyde, the mm -hmm. ability to synthesize from aldehyde. Mm -hmm. There's copper sulfate, mm -hmm. which is a heavy metal is used to turn vegetables greener when they're canned. Wow. So all of them things they know from day one, the human being shouldn't consume it. You mentioned copper. Wow. I told you people, they know long time that the mass is not supposed to consume those kind of chemicals, but they put it on the food anyway. Because they have a goal just to feed you and destroy you. You understand the food? And a lot of people would never put a finger on it. They're eating food and the, the family member, all of these things, your family line do the same eating and they die. They just eat themselves to death, eat themselves in sickness and everything and nobody learn. They will never point the finger on the food. Is That's what's killing you. Some people, they only eat from cans. You got to understand, and everything happens, they draw for the cans. Oh, hurricane coming, they buy all kind of canned food. All of it got preservative, and they don't care about your health when they think about preservative. They don't care if it tear you up. They don't want to kill you right away, but they don't want, they don't care. They don't want it to make you fall right away so they can point a finger on it directly. They want it to slowly kill you. You understand me? sulfate in particular was one Copper that was sulfate. used Listen. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. It went into green peas and it green went into peas. pickles. Mm -hmm. Anything that needed to look bright and fresh. You see, Copper. that's because it's not real. Why you need the peas to look bright and fresh? The peas is just peas. You eat it like it is. It's not about beauty when it comes to peas. It's something that you eat. Wow. Why would you want it to look green and fresh and all of that? Wow. Sulfate went into it. Mm -hmm. There you go. In the 19th century, most food was still real. Mm -hmm. And then the 20th century, we Listen. saw the process of... Go back. In the 19th century, most food was still real. In the 19th century, most food was still real. Just listen how they talk right there. What that mean? <laughs> That's long gone. That's... Uh, I don't care how it sounds to you people, but that's real. The truth is bitter, but it's real. So yes, it's long gone. There ain't no real food. You see organic on the box, don't, don't fuck with it. Don't eat it. That's to just, the, don't eat deception. So if they tell you, listen, this, this box of milk right here is organic, don't touch it. They show you lettuce and them thing and say organic, don't touch it. Why would they deceive you and tell you it's organic? There's no organic on the earth, period. There's no organic. You're going to find organic in the stores? you got to be dumber than a rat. Those people that are selling those shit in the store got to get it out to a lot of people, quick and fast. They have time to go organic with what, where? you got to understand it involves some kind of chemical. That means it's not organic. Watch this. And then the 20th century saw the process of food going from real to something that no one had ever seen. There before. you go. Mm -hmm. It'd be wonderful to think that there mm -hmm. was this, Look at this back in American history where wow. everything was free range and organic and perfect. Mm -hmm. But in the oh, 19th shit. century, as more and more Americans were leaving the farm mm -hmm. and now living in cities, you hear that? they had lost mm -hmm. this direct and intimate mm -hmm. connection. And they take their time to implement it. That's how they do it, people. And now, in these times, there ain't no farmers. They show you big companies buying out all the farmlands. Bill Gates, they tell you China own a lot of farmland in America. All kind of dumb shit. Even Wall Street, they tell you buying up these farmlands. 
What do you think farming is done? All industry food you're getting from the establishment. What do you think? It was all by design. Now the mass is going to die quicker. That's just it. Your food. Harvey Washington Wiley was mm -hmm. born in October oh, okay. of 1844, mm -hmm. knowing full well where his food came from. Mm -hmm. He grew up in a log cabin in Kent, Indiana, about a hundred miles northeast of where Abraham Lincoln had been raised mm -hmm. just a few decades earlier. All bullshit. Like Lincoln, Wiley spent his youth working on his family farm. Yeah, that people, they're always going to tell you that these people work on farm, even Lincoln. What a fake shit. It's a damn devil puppet. They groom from day one to be the president of America. Those times, you got to understand that. He never farm shit. By six, he was herding the family mm -hmm. cows back to the barn for their mm -hmm. daily milking. Yes, so we can bring At ten, agenda he was driving it. the plow. Mm -hmm. He would talk about the fact that he had grown up in this vanishing American mm -hmm. idol of a small family farm where everything was fresh and mm -hmm. everything that was made was made naturally. They did churn their own butter. They did milk their own cows. Mm -hmm. So he was very grounded in that old-time agrarian sense of this is what real food is. And what I do think it led him to do is this very simple category, real food, fake food, mm -hmm. with nothing in between. Okay. It was young Harvey's father, Preston Wiley, mm -hmm. who cultivated within him one of his most enduring attributes, a fervent belief in social justice. His father was a farmer but mm -hmm. was also an itinerant evangelical preacher, Listen. passionate about social justice. He was a conductor on the Underground Railroad. In the and that's how they build your character, but conduct of Underground Railroad. Railroad is there to keep you in line. You understand? You can't go where they don't want you. That's why they bring in transportation to keep your ass in this box right here. You can't drive where ain't no damn road. You can't take the train to where the tickets don't sell. Same thing with plane and everything else. So that's to keep you in a box. You're giving these people credit for that Southern shit. Indiana where they were. His family was very progressive. Mm -hmm. Wiley grew up in an atmosphere in which there were standards of honesty and integrity. Mm -hmm, of course. Influenced by religion. Mm -hmm. Influenced by religion. Show you that he's dumb. And the whole wide world that bind to the... Religion and basically, you know, running with it, that shit is dumb. It's just for division, to divide up the masses in section when they tell you it's one creator, but you have 10 or 1,500 religion. Why? It's that there is, you know, a right way and a wrong way. He read a lot. Mm -hmm. His father clearly realized that education was important. He encouraged mm -hmm. all of his family oh, to be well educated. Masses. Mm -hmm. Wiley was determined to use his education for good. He earned a medical degree at mm -hmm. Indiana Medical Listen. College in mm -hmm. 1871. Mm -hmm. It's called making a puppet right here on screen. The one that's going to take the credit for basic is, you know, putting a high to the supposed be chemical food. He wasn't shy about expounding mm -hmm. on the Listen. virtues of science mm -hmm. for achieving a longer life full of health, happiness, that? and hope, mm -hmm. he noted. Really? They dare to shorten your lifespan. Listen. Then he received a degree in chemistry from of Harvard. Course. You go get all the degrees. And in 1874, mm -hmm. accepted the position to be Purdue University's first chemistry professor. Listen. You're easy that But Wiley quickly grew restless with life in the classroom, mm -hmm. finding himself more at home running experiments from within his Spartan laboratory. Mm -hmm. Spartan. He mm -hmm. loves chemistry. He saw chemistry as a science that could do good. Mm -hmm. And that Listen. was how he wanted to use it. In 1878, Wiley took a sabbatical to Europe, where he found himself on the cutting edge of food chemistry. He attended lectures of world-renowned scientists like August Wilhelm von Hoffmann, mm -hmm. the inventor puppets. of formaldehyde. Mm -hmm. You hear that, people? You see that? That's another wicked chemical again. Like I tell you, people, all of these people that they're giving credit, they're the one who are responsible for those poison chemicals now in your food. Don't let them fool you. Listen. It was there that 
Wiley became interested in European advancements in analytic chemistry mm -hmm. and in perfecting techniques to ferret out chemical additives in food. You hear that? <laughs> While in Europe, Wiley saw firsthand the power of science to reform an unregulated food industry run amok. By 1860, Britain had already passed a major law mm -hmm. to limit chemical adulteration of food. No, After people, when they pass the law, that means it's in place for them to use the chemical on you with the government taking credit for not letting get to, that letting get to you. But it is. You understand that? The government just going to mention it. They're not going to stop it. That's what you need to understand. Go back. 1860, Britain had already passed a major law mm -hmm. to limit chemical adulteration of food after a series of deaths caused by toxic chemical additives stirred public outrage. Okay, so you see what I tell you earlier about they don't want it to kill you right away because if it do, the finger going to point right on that supposed to be food. Do you understand that? It got to stay in your body so you don't understand what going to arm you later on. When the arm come, you don't know what it is. You don't know what caused it. That's the reason why they have to alarm right here and say, listen, the chemical is in the food. That's why they kill those people. But they don't want it to kill you right away. You can't point finger on those things when it takes time to kill you. You understand? In one incident, over 20 people from the town of Bradford mm -hmm. died. See? After being poisoned by arsenic-laced food coloring in mm -hmm. candy. Wow. There you go. Arsenic. By 1881, mm -hmm. France had banned the use of the chemical salicylic acid mm -hmm. in their wine salicylic after French acid. chemists sounded alarms mm -hmm. about its toxicity. Okay, why would that be in the wine? You don't understand it's in everything. So while they point the finger on the wine, which they're never going to stop putting it in there, they have it in a lot of more shit that you're using. Things that you're taking in got those same chemical, even your water. Germany also banned the chemical from its beer. They're full of shit, people. Why was it in the beer? Wow, okay. The man. laboratories in Europe wow. taking advantage is of the new analytic techniques are starting to try to get ahead of this. Can we detect it? Mm -hmm. Europe was ahead of us on that, and they were particularly interested in food analysis, which Wiley found fascinating and which he knew was mm -hmm. non existent in the United States at that mm -hmm. time. In America, powerful food manufacturers mm -hmm. from J. Ogden Armour, mm -hmm. the leader of the massive Chicago Meatpacking Listen. Trust, uh -huh. to Asa Candler, the head of the industry giant Coca-Cola. Bam! You see that, people? All of them tie. It's government people's come up with that shit. All of them. It's the same people own the Pepsi, own the Coca-Cola, the government people. They just love competition. And plus, you buy more. When they're competing, do you get it? The same fucking government people give you those and have you thinking that they're fighting and they have a competition between Pepsi and Coke when you're drinking them both. You understand? That's how they do it. Pay attention to the destruction of the masses by these puppets that they put on. Face no such prohibitions on their use of chemical additives, mm -hmm. nor any regulation on divulging mm -hmm. ingredients on food labels. Mm -hmm. By go. the end of the 19th century, the American food supply mm -hmm. was rife wow. with chemicals and fakes. Wow. The United States was unique among industrialized nations about mm -hmm. not having uh, food safety regulations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there were all kinds of... Let them talk about food safety regulation. That's what they're going to use to poison you. Because the FDA going to say, yes, we approve it. The food is good for you. Now go ahead and eat it. Now you can close your eyes and consume it. Don't worry about it poisoning you. That's why I try to tell you they don't want the blame on those food when it damage your body, break you down, lead you to death. So that's why they have the Food and Drug Administration to act like they're there to protect you. They're just feeding you the damn prices. on American food imports in Europe because they didn't trust mm -hmm. the cleanliness of oh, our shit. food. The idea of government regulation, which was anathema to the mm -hmm. oligarchs regulation. and the robber barons who mm -hmm. owned this industry, 
Mm -hmm. Why should government get in my way? It has no right to interfere in the way I do business. They are the same government people. That's what you need to understand about the why should the government. That's them. That's the same government people fighting to feed you this fake food without you knowing. They give you all this drama, but behind it is them. They're the one who want to feed you that food. People lied in the what advertising just on a routine basis. Mm -hmm. And Look. there was no regulation. Mm -hmm. Natural oats. You see that right there, people? Where is the oats come from? You don't get it, man. Where they get so many oatmeal from? Yes, it grow on tree. You're dumb as a rock. I already told you, all them shits is fake food that they're feeding us on this side of the earth where we don't belong. Animals and insects made on this earth, this side of the earth right here. They're the one who made to live here, not human beings. We all got to need assistance here. Unless you are animal on this side of the earth, you need assistance from these people. That's why they have to come up with oatmeal. You have to understand that. They're the one who come up with all the food that you're you know eating. That. And people didn't even think it should be discussed. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. was just a capitalist marketplace mm -hmm. where the Good buyer beware man. and consumers wow. were completely unprotected. Mm -hmm. And these are industries mm -hmm. that give a lot of money to very specific people in government to make sure... It's bullshit, people. It's 100% bullshit. But these people give a lot of money to particular government people so they can... So they can make their business run. It's garbage. They tell you that shit because it's a lie. It's a 100% lie. They're all the same. It's the same people. So Ein's not to pay off the government. What government did they pay off? Dumb people on this earth don't get it. It's operation. They have you believe in that shit. They own them companies. The government people own those companies. The people who really govern you. Is the people that run in this earth. They have them puppets in front of you. They don't govern shit. The real government is the ones that behind closed door. Giving these puppets orders. You have to understand that all of these things is by design. It have to happen for the masses. Demise. It's called the rotation. You have to die to make the other person live. That's how they set it up. So of course they have to kill you quick. 100%. But nothing does happen. So that's also a factor. The ability of business to buy government. No, oh, buy government. What a dumb shit for the masses. Mm -hmm. I guess it's regular people come up with money. So now they can use it to buy government. Are you dumb? The government is the ones who make money. That's what you need to understand. The real government of this earth print money. What do you think? You can buy them out? <laughs> it's dumb. Upon his return to the U.S., Wiley was more determined than ever to investigate the American food industry mm -hmm, of course. and to raise public awareness about the prevalence mm -hmm. of fake food mm -hmm. and chemical adulterants. Mm -hmm. With new state-of-the-art lab equipment he purchased in Europe, Wiley began informal shit. investigations into processed food, mm -hmm. perfecting his analytic skills along the way. Mm -hmm. Soon, he was able to detect a host of chemical additives that manufacturers were routinely using to preserve their food. Chemicals like formaldehyde, mm -hmm. sodium benzoate, mm -hmm. and borax. And all of those food where I show you how they make it, they had those products, one or two of them, in almost everything that you eat. I already told you, bagged up food, you don't have to ask what it is, it's pies in a bag. All those chips and all of those canned things and all of those, you know, soda we drink, all of them shits is poison. It's no doubt, people. There's no other word for it. It's just poison. They mix up chemical and potions to poison the masses. Like I say, you have to dead quick. 100% in. While he wasn't so much bothered by the chemical preservatives themselves, mm -hmm. but that the American public had no idea what they were eating. You see? So and once they know it's good, right? Listen. Had no requirement to tell them. Mm -hmm. There you go, people. That's what they Wiley worry about. Very strong. They're not worry about getting the chemical out of the food. They worry about, I tell you about it in a label. You believe that, people? Why they never how to solve the problem, man? 
You need to stop the chemical from being in the food. No, you can't do that. You're just going to make it the people aware of it. It's bullshit. They know what an enzyme is. They don't know what the fuck is those chemical. You think I'm stupid? Them people don't know what it is. You mention enzyme and all these chlorides and all these things. They don't know what it is. So, of course, you tell them that it's in there. And, uh, okay, that's it. You tell them soya bean is in every damn thing. What is soya bean? Huh? Soya bean this, soya bean that. Where does it come from? So you have soya bean in everything. They're not going to ask what it is. You don't get it, man. The peoples don't know what these things is. A matter of fact, you have a program for everything to basically tell them what it is so they don't have to worry about it. You need to wake up. You're not going to understand what they got in the food because they have it on the label. Label is a damn deception. Processed food, borax. go ahead and do it. Just have on the label that See? it says borax so that shit. people can make a choice. Yeah, but what is borax? But if there's no way for you to tell the difference visually, no way for you to tell the difference wow. by smell, mm -hmm. then it's very easy mm -hmm. for companies to lie mm -hmm. and cheat yes. and defraud. And that's what I'm trying to tell you with that supposed be wild character. Yes, he can take all his food home and do his science and find chemical in it and all this shit. The human being don't know that shit. They can't tell. <laughs> you don't understand. Remember, you only know what you know. What do you know? What they give you to eat, that's all you know about. You know about one that don't have the chemical. You don't. What's wrong with you? You only know the ones with the chemical. You're eating these bread. You only know what they're feeding you, man. So how are you going to tell that it's chemical in it? It's chemical they've been feeding you your whole damn life. Come on now. It was this kind of corporate fraud that offended Wiley's oh, puritanical yeah, sense offended. of right and wrong. You believe that? He was determined to use his science to raise public oh. awareness. If what you want to do is have your science make a difference, mm -hmm. then you've got to move it out into the larger community. He starts doing more and more public outreach, and you can actually mm -hmm. see it, Purdue. You know, he's talking in churches. He's talking to mm -hmm. different public All groups. Bullshit, this is people. not acceptable. People wow. are being cheated. Mm -hmm. We need to step in and mm -hmm. make this right. We need labels. He's stepping in because he needs labels. Again. And, and make this right. We need labels. We need some kind of regulation and standards. We need label and regulation. Everything got regulation. Government control. What do you mean regulation? You're going to regulate the chemical? Wow, people. Why did they just don't stop the chemical? Why didn't put out all these protesters go against the government or go against these companies and say, listen, stop the chemical in the food? No, they don't want that. Put it on the label. Wow, what a dumb shit for the masses. The label is one of the biggest deception. That's what you need to understand. It have you thinking that you know what you're eating. It's not real. The label is fakery. 100%. You believe that somebody that want to sell that product to you, want you to consume it, going to put something in there to turn you off, put something on the label to turn you off? You think they're going to put something on the label to turn you off or deteriorate you from eating it? Wow, what a dumb shit for the masses. Mm -hmm. When it came time to publish his findings of fraud in the honey and syrup industry, Wiley learned quickly how his work had touched a nerve within the industry what a dumb and awakened shit. powerful you forces you, allied against maker. him. There you go. Well, mm -hmm. food manufacturers... So they admit that they have these corn syrup makers because they attack the Wiley character right here, they say, right? So they admit that the syrup makers is there and then at the same time they're selling you honey and maple syrup. The corn syrup they're talking about right here, the corn syrup there is the fake food. So yes, the, the makers of the corn syrup now coming out and attacking Wiley. So that means they, 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 they admit it. That is, <laughs> you don't get it, people. They admit it because this is the corn syrup makers right here. And the man was talking about honey and, and supposedly maple syrup. So why would them attack him? So that means they're not hiding it. Do you get it? Actors from the beginning were outraged by what Wiley was doing because a lot of this had been a well-kept secret. Mm -hmm. So well the makers secret. of fake syrups, the makers mm -hmm. of fake honey. Do you ever see that an honey says it's, it's fake? 
Okay, so what the fuck did the Wiley character do with the label? Huh? I already told the masses, man. They, you see the syrup that you're drinking? All of it is corn syrup. Corn syrup. Like I say, corn syrup? And you say, oh, no, Maggie. I drink some, 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 some strawberry syrup. That was strawberry. <laughs> hey, when the corn... Hey, let me tell you something about that high fructose corn syrup. It come out white, clear. When they're done with it, people, it's a white substance like water. It just thick. So they put the color into it and the flavor. The only thing is the corn syrup is it's sweet. They have no flavor. It's not coming from an actual fruit. You understand? It's, it's GMOs. Genetically modified living organism. So that means it's not real food. So when they, when they make it and it's done, it looks like this thick, white, so clear substance. So now they can put the taste to it and the flavor. I should say, if when they put the flavor on it and the coloring, I should say, so they can put, you know, yellow and say it's mango with a little mango flavor. That's it. So the corn syrup, people, the corn syrup going to come out clear. They can put whatever flavor they want on it, the fake flavoring that they made. So yes, no real syrup is there coming from the supposedly fruit that's on that supposedly syrup. You understand that? They don't, they don't use no maple to make maple syrup. It's the same corn syrup. They just give it the flavor and tan it a little bit. Strawberry, same thing. Listen. Them are instantly angry about this. There was actually a pamphlet that circulated at one point called Wiley's Honey mm -hmm. Lie Look at this shit. to try to smear yeah. his reputation as a scientist mm -hmm. and as a person. You know, all of these attacks turn out to be very personal. Yeah, but all you're going to attack, all the syrup people are going to attack him and he's saying that he's talking about honey. That means they're admitting it. That's what I try to tell you. So why would they try to discredit him? That's not discredit him. That basically coming out and say he was right. <laughs> you don't get it, man. I mean, the beekeeper should have been delighted Look at this. that he had mm -hmm. exposed what they were trying to compete with. Mm -hmm. But instead, all they could see was the bad publicity it was bringing to honey overall. And so he made mm -hmm. enemies, but he was also extremely honest and frank. What and he had no subtlety shit. in the arts of, uh, of negotiation. The attacks only emboldened Wiley. Mm -hmm. It was my first participation in the fray, he would later write, and he liked it. But for the trustees of Purdue University, Wiley's outspoken advocacy was unbecoming of its faculty. Mm -hmm. And by so 1882, it was clear that he had worn out his welcome on mm -hmm. campus. All bullshit. No, you Wiley, can go off. as he would the rest of his career, mm -hmm. found himself a lone voice pitted against a powerful, entrenched institution. The U.S. Department of Agriculture was created by President Lincoln in 1862. See? That's so they control that everything that you grow. You understand? Ministry of Agriculture, you know already they control that shit. You understand that people, they have regulation of all your grow things. Listen. When America was still largely an agrarian nation, mm -hmm. its primary mission was to provide support for American farmers. Mm -hmm. Listen. <laughs> In 1883, wow. Wiley accepted a job as the new chief of the department's division of chemistry, a wow. tiny office with a lab housed in the basement of the agency. Mm -hmm. Listen, look how far this Prior to Wiley's goes. arrival, mm -hmm. the office had conducted only small food fraud investigations. Mm -hmm. But Wiley had a bold new agenda for the fledgling bureau. A wide-scale study of the state of American food. By the time he got to Washington, D.C., he's already made people angry. He's ticked off the honey producers. He's recognized that there can be scientific hostility to some of his stands. Oh, and he's a little more battle savvy mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. 
than you might have expected when he comes in. And as it turns out, he's going to need to be very battle savvy. With more money and wider reach, the chemist wasted little time enacting his plan to study American food manufacturing. His first target would be the dairy industry, mm -hmm. including the go. quality and healthfulness of milk, mm -hmm. <laughs> one of the most important foods in the American diet. Yeah, that people, how did that happen? The pus from the cow right there, the cow's milk to grow the calves. How did it get to be American most important meal? Wow, unbelievable people. So you take the milk from the cow to grow a calf, Wow. And then you drink it and you make it your most important meal. You don't drink breast milk. You drink the cow milk. You don't drink woman milk coming from the, the breast. You drink it from a cow breast. Wow. Okay, you see how the world is, people? That's to grow a calf right there. That means the cow hormones is in that milk to grow a calf, not a human being. Wow, there you go. Listen and one of the most vulnerable to widespread adulteration. Mm -hmm. Look at this shit. Very few cultures have had the relationship to milk that the United States mm -hmm. has. All by design. They're the one who design it because later on, that cow can't give you no milk. All gonna be industry made. Wow. Part of it is we were wow. at a, an agrarian economy that was mostly dairy. Mm -hmm. So there almost every mm -hmm. farm had some dairy. Mm -hmm. Fresh milk was what you gave your children. Mm -hmm. Milk always had this association with purity and wholesomeness. How did you get that? Where did you get that from? Because it's white. You need to get your ass out of here. How did you get that in your head? That that milk is good for you. How did you get yourself to believe that? It's all programming. Believe it or not. You know, for a very long time in history, it was fairly unusual to drink milk except for giving it to babies. Mm -hmm. But in America, adults started drinking milk much more oh, just... than in other places. And they started drinking it a lot. Mm -hmm. But there's a the problem that milk, if it wasn't very fresh, would make you sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Milk production mm -hmm. was becoming increasingly corrupt because as you have the rise of industries which are clustered mm -hmm. around big uh -huh. urban areas. Yes, so later on they will shut down the people that actually milking a cow and then they're going to bring you those milk from the establishment in a bottle. You got to understand a plastic jug, yes, with a label on it. What do you think? It's all by design. You can't get no milk from no farmers. They tell you that milk is poison. They call it raw milk and pasteurized. The pasteurized is a, is a basically a treatment they have to go through with the milk. You don't understand with chemicals and everything to keep it, to make it last longer on the shelves and everything. That's poison for the people. You have people who are living on a very small budget mm -hmm. and they can't afford the wonderful farm fresh milk mm -hmm. and that? so mm -hmm. the dairy industry mm -hmm. begins coming up with creative ways Listen. to make cheap milk yeah that to make cheap milk to make cheap milk not milk in a cow wow by the time wiley began his study in 1885 dairy manufacturers had learned that there was money to be made by adulterating their product the standard formula was a pint of warm water Listen. for every quart of milk. Mm -hmm. To rid the remaining liquid of its bluish tint, mm -hmm. producers yep. would add whitening agents such as... Whitening agents. So you see that right there? After they're feeding you water for milk, they're basically going to put something in it to make it white, to look like milk. You see what I tell you people? Look how easy... They poison you. What is that substance that they use to turn the milk white? Is that food? No. It's more like poison. Do you understand? They don't use food to do this right here. It's not food. Like another food you use to make this white? No. They use chemical. 100%. Plaster of Paris. Mm -hmm. Or there chalk. Watch this. Chalk. Mm -hmm. For customers expecting a layer of cream on top, Mm -hmm. They might add something yellowish, Look. Mm -hmm. perhaps a dollop 
of pureed calf brains. You hear that, people? Wow, unbelievable. So like I say, people, all the people that's on the bit of truth, you already know this. There ain't no real food. And a lot of people are always joking me like, Mag, you know, what do you eat and all of these things? And sometimes I don't have no answer for them. I'm not lying. It's like me myself is baffled. You understand? The more we go in life, we kind of more realizing that we taking in these bad things. And sometimes it's so shocking. The people just won't believe it, that they actually poisoning the food that you eat. Literally, they literally poisoning the food for you to eat. Like I say, you have to sick, got complications. You have to die quicker. You have to die earlier than you're supposed to. Like I don't tell you before, we wasn't meant to just live 85, 90, 95 years old. No, the human being was made to live way longer than that. But because we've been altered and continually, continually monitored and altered by these foods and them things that we're taking in, it won't change. We're just going to die faster in life, move on so the next people can burn, so the manipulation stay fresh. That's how they do it. The dangers of milk, particularly in cities, were already well known. Mm -hmm. In New York City, they had this odd thing where there are a lot of breweries in the city. And they would set up dairies next to the brewery. Mm -hmm. You take a cow and you just chain it for life to this spot. Mm -hmm. And the leftover from the brewery is called swill. And sort of come through on a trough mm -hmm. and it was a very poor quality of feed and there was no hygiene at all in these places the cows basically died standing there being milked these cows were so sickly their teeth rotted out <laughs> pretty soon they couldn't even eat they have to give you these so the establishment can feed you milk and cow meat you don't get it this is the reason why they have all of these agendas, all the other chaos. They show you some things that sick your stomach and they give you the reason why they have to get rid of it. You see that and put something else in place, part of the destruction As a cow of makes milk, it has to be eating food with nutrients mm -hmm. in it. And these swill dairies actually were making milk that didn't have a lot of the nutrients that you would there ain't no, There ain't no nutrient in it. Don't let me cuss. There ain't no nutrient in it. It's fake shit they've been feeding you. They sell you a lie. Do you understand that it's a lie they're selling you that you need to drink the milk from a cow? It's a fake shit, 100%. And like I say, they pump faking you for you to think that the milk is coming from the cow from day one. That's why they give you this. And then later on, you're getting the milk from a factory with no cow involved. Factory milk. But the problem with dairy products was not simply a lack of nutrients in swill milk. Tenement houses packed with millions of laborers mm -hmm. and lack of proper sewage and sanitation mm -hmm. made cities breeding grounds for bacteria and viruses that could be transmitted by spoiled milk. Mm -hmm. You see that? Wow. What milk purveyors were often selling a product laden with deadly bacteria. Mm -hmm. You see that? Of course, they're going to tell you people bacteria in the milk so the government can serve you up. No doubt about it. Wow, unbelievable that the people just buy in into this design plan that the government have in place. Outbreaks of scarlet fever, so scarlet tuberculosis, fever. and cholera were common. Mm -hmm. that come Unrefrigerated from milk. <laughs> milk sold mm -hmm. in the streets in open buckets. See that? I there mean, you go. Just every imaginable you opportunity go. for all kinds of disease, mm -hmm. you know. It's and I told you people, I ain't no profit or nothing, but I can tell you right now that that was a hoax. That was a 100% hoax. You tell because the other, other chaos that comes with it. <laughs> you understand? All of a sudden, the establishment going to feed you milk because the regular milk that people selling will give you sickness, viruses, and diseases. You see that right there? All the other chaos have to set up. It just don't happen. You understand that? Like walking around with a Petri dish. <laughs> what can we grow in here? The 
government's testing of milk revealed problems nationwide. You see, the government supposed to be testing milk now because regular people selling it. Do you see that? And when they're supposed to be tested, any finding they come with, you can't challenge it because you don't do the test. You don't have no equipment to do the test. You can't test it. They can, and they're coming back with the result. You're going to believe it. But they're full of shit. In one sample, researchers found worms wriggling in the bottom of the bottles. Yes, those things will scare you enough for say, yeah, I would rather buy it in a jug from the supermarket. That's the reason why they do this. You don't have to ask. It's, that's the same reason. To cover up right spoiled there. milk, the industry routinely turned to the deadly chemical formaldehyde. There you go. It deadly is- chemical. The deadly chemical. 100% on the money. Like I say, all of those chemicals that they put in food is deadly chemical. Why did they do it? Okay. Civil war, people realized that formaldehyde is a great preservative. It was the number one embalming fluid during the Civil War. Embalming fluid. Dairy men start putting formaldehyde into milk. Mm-hmm. And as it turns out, it's wonderful for them. Apparently, it's slightly Swedish in taste. So it would mm-hmm. sweeten up the taste of souring milk. <laughs> wow. And then they would sell this milk. And so mm-hmm. you actually start seeing in newspapers around the country embalmed milk scandals Mm -hmm. because the milk starts killing people mostly children and the dairymen are never prosecuted Mm -hmm. thousands of kids were dying every single year but again lacking regulation there were no laws being broken Mm -hmm. all you have to do is get some regulation and now you're good right you don't get it people why not stop drinking milk period You see, they never like to solve the problem. They like to add on. Do you get it? Put you deeper into that shit. Stop drinking the damn milk. People back then, right there. Why they don't stop? Just stop drinking the damn milk. You're killing babies. And you still worry about feeding your baby that shit. Why? You have to have the government come up with another milk. Or some other milk or the good way. No, leave the milk alone. Why not? Wow, unbelievable, The laws that man. were being passed locally, inspectors wow. were just being paid off by the dairy owners. It's bullshit, people. The example wow. of milk is especially appalling because mm-hmm. milk is a food product that's being heavily marketed for children. Mm-hmm. And to see, see wow. corporate misbehavior in that sphere really angers Wiley. Wiley's findings about other dairy products turned up widespread mm-hmm. fraud there and deception. Much of the butter that scientists found on what the market had nothing to do with dairy products. What do you think, people? I told you that every day, man. Come on now, man. There's no milk make butter. There ain't no milk in the damn cheese. You don't get it. All of them things, they make them. All of them is made individually. Wow. Everybody just gone dumb. All of them things they tell you just to make you feel comfortable in eating these products. Butter is some saturated fat they put together it got nothing to do with milk wow but was in fact a much cheaper compound known as oleomargarine made from the unprocessed scraps left over by meat packers yeah but they still call it margarine they still have margarine there wow when people go and buy it and use it the same way so like i say people they never really help you out when they come out with these right here they basically sink you deeper into the deception. Right One here. of the things that the margarine producers had been doing was to label oleomargarine as butter. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes they call it butterine, mm-hmm. but they would label it as butter and they would just sell it. Mm-hmm. Nothing on the package to say it was anything but You remember they have a commercial say, I can't believe it's not butter? <laughs> you remember they have a, they have a, a margarine call that? They can't believe it's not butter and the people buy it for butter. You don't get it. This is unbelievable. You still buy it for butter. They say, you can't believe it's butter. What they try to tell you, none of them things that they sell you is real people. It's not authentic. It's fake food they feed in the masses in Babylon. Except, of course, it would be cheaper. Mm-hmm. And so cheaper. when they went in and looked at this, they were able to show just how fraudulent that was. Wiley published the results of his study in a government bulletin, mm-hmm. which made a pr- 
persuasive case for federal regulation of the entire dairy industry. There you go, federal regulation, meaning that the government is going to now serve you the damn butter and nobody regular. That's it. That's why they call it regulation. Listen. Congress held hearings, Congress. There but you chose go. to focus its attention only on regulating oleomargarine. Mm -hmm. The meatpackers struck back immediately, mm -hmm. claiming the bill was a campaign made out of a farmer's mm -hmm. panic and accusing... So you see, the meat people, they're the one who go off, not the dairy people that supposedly make butter. So you see right there, people? <laughs> Just like when they talk about the honey's fake. Yes, you have this, the, the corn syrup people come and attack Wiley, supposedly. You see that? There's <laughs> a stifling scientific wow. progress in food manufacturing. Mm -hmm. After weeks of hearings, the Butter Act of 1886 Act. passed. Always an act, people. The Butter Act passed. What happened now? Now you're getting the butter from the big companies. That's the same fake butter they're giving you. That's nothing to do with no cow milk. It's just fat they put together. Saturated fat to basically destroy your body and give you diabetes and them things. Break you down. You understand? Even can give you stoppage of blood. Even go to your heart. Give you a heart attack and stroke. That's what they do. But it was a tepid piece of legislation imposing only a small tax on oleomargarine. Just tax people. They're just going to tax them. They're not going to stop them from producing the fake butter. And doing nothing to address the dangerous state of go. milk production across the country. There you go. Mm -hmm. Got milk? It was hardly the rebuke that Wiley was looking for in proof that the food industry had a stranglehold on Congress. Mm -hmm. Wiley doubled down on his efforts to raise awareness about impurities and fakery, launching studies into everything from baking powder, spices, coffee, mm -hmm. and canned vegetables. Mm -hmm. Why did he need to look at coffee, people? When Mag tell you that coffee is fake shit they make, you come up against me, but you don't understand. They all know. All of them know that the coffee is fake. What they're serving you up for coffee is fake shit. They don't have that much coffee plant worldwide to make so many coffee to feed the people. It's unbelievable. You understand that? They don't have enough coffee plant to make so many packs of coffee, bottles of coffee circulating around the world. The it's results were startling. This coffee study revealed large-scale fakery. See that? A product made mostly of chicory, sawdust, and ash. Go back. One made mostly of chicory, <laughs> sawdust, and ash. <laughs> One study on pepper revealed fillers of charcoal wow. and coconut shells. Wow. wow. Canned beans were loaded with copper sulfate. You see that, people? What we gonna do? He published his reports mm -hmm. in a series of scientific digests and federal papers, mm -hmm. which came to be known as Bulletin 13. Mm -hmm. So the bulletins went to Congress. Farmers would request them. Food mm -hmm. advocates would request them. Mm -hmm. But it's all within this fairly small community of people <laughs> who are kind of in the know. So Wiley actually starts realizing that this is a problem. Consumers are completely in the dark about their food. Mm -hmm. The chief chemist was not content with informing only other scientists and lawmakers. He understood that to get Congress to act on anything, mm -hmm. ah. he'd need to rouse the American public. There you go. He believed that scientists shouldn't just be talking to other scientists. Mm -hmm. He actually hired a science writer. Um, someone who is not a chemist himself, but who was very, very skilled at taking highly technical scientific jargony report yeah jibby jabba it makes no sense both science writer it's garbage all of them is in on it people to pies the masses and like i say this wilder character that's supposed to be fighting and to expose fake food did never do a good job only thing they do is put a label and form the fda what's good about that now they make you feel comfortable 
in eating those same chemical even more potent now that's what you need to understand the people still getting the chemical food they never change it no doubt you're getting more chemical than you used to get when they have that wilder character fighting for you you understand what i'm saying there is more chemical food now more than ever so you have to understand i'm gonna do another segment on this a part two so look out for it yeah appreciate everybody for taking in this mag bitter truth podcast sunday yeah i'll be back on move